Today we tackle the age-old debate. Is Mega Man 3 better than Mega Man 2 or vice versa? And better question, did Capcom peak at Mega Man 3? Because let's be honest, nobody really ever talks about the rest of the franchise. It's just kind of, it's just kind of there. Are you an everyday nerd? Hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so that you don't miss the next episode. Yo, welcome back to Your Everyday Nerd, the show we should probably just call it Your Everyday Mega Man because I've been taking a look at this entire series, so buckle up buckaroos, because it's going to be a rocky ride. That's plenty, plenty to do. I'm your host, Zach Snyder, and today's Throwback Thursday, Happy Thursday. On Thursdays, we go all the way back to the 80s and 90s and talk about media and entertainment and stuff around that area. Of course, this is Friday and not Thursday. I want to apologize real quick because my entire schedule got mixed up this week. I I've been dealing with a lot of life stuff. And that's why I've only just now been able to start putting out these episodes again. So bear with me in the next few days as I really start to get my groove back on. I'm still not completely settled with all the live stuff, but I really wanted to start making videos again. So if they're off a day, bear with me. I'm going to try to resolve that for this upcoming week. But anyways, it's Friday. Happy Friday. But today we're going to tackle the Throwback Thursday episode for Mega Man 3. As you can see, I've been playing a lot of Mega Man lately. I don't have too much of an attachment to the character as most people do with this kind of franchise, but it was something that I started playing when I was in high school. I really enjoyed it and I wanted to tackle the entire franchise on YouTube. So I did an episode about Mega Man 1 and 2, you can go watch that already. I did an episode about Mega Man 11 because it just came out and I really loved it. So you can go watch that already. But today we're going to be talking about Mega Man 3, which some people say is the best Mega Man game, but I don't know if I quite agree with that. Mega Man 3 released on September 28, 1990, only two years after Mega Man 2 came out, which is the difference because Mega Man 2 only came out a year after Mega Man 1 game. You would think that there'd be some kind of subtitle for these games because saying Mega a lot in a video is very, very frustrating. Relax, it's just Mega Man 3. Oh, um, it seems that the Japanese version actually does have a subtitle. It's called Rockman 3, Dr. Wily no Saigo. Wait. That means the end of Dr. Wily. Already in Mega Man 3, the end of Dr. Wily is here? Yeah, I don't, I, don't, I don't think that's the case. But anyways, actually what's interesting here is that the story in Mega Man 3 is a lot different than the story in Mega Man 1 and 2. Dr. Wily decides, I've already tried to take over the world twice. It didn't work for me, so I'm going to go ahead and stop that. Be a little bit more peaceful, be a good guy, and he helps Dr. Light create the robot named Gamma, which is supposed to be this gigantic, peaceful, loving robot that's gonna save the world from all destruction. Gamma was almost complete, he just needed one last thing the eight infinity gems. Sorry, that's not it, it's the eight crystal orbs. No, nope, that's not it either. Apparently, it's another MacGuffin, it's the eight energy elements. He needs those in order to be fully created. These eight energy elements are scattered throughout eight different planets for some reason, and the eight robot masters, the newest ones, have gone awry and crazy and started going bad. We don't know why though. I wonder. I wonder who did it. Along the way, we meet the mysterious Proto Man, also known as Breakman. Unbeknowingly to us, he is actually Mega Man's brother who has been sent to both challenge and help Mega Man to become better and, you know, find these energy elements to put together Gamma. After Mega Man returns back to Dr. Light's lab, we find out that oh, Gamma has been stolen by Dr. Wily. Who, who, who would have who guessed this? Who, who, who would have thought? Who would have thought? Mega Man stops Wily and Gamma. Dr. Wily's castle is destroyed. And right at the last second, right when Mega Man and Dr. Wily are going to die, Proto Man comes in to save Mega Man from ultimate destruction. But unfortunately, Dr. Wily actually dies. It's, uh, I'm just kidding. You can actually see a UFO of him uh, in, the, in the distance. He's still alive. He'll be back. Trust me. He'll be back. I've seen the future. I've played Mega Man 11. I know what happens. He'll be back. Just like the other Mega Man games, of course, you don't play these games for the story, although this one is a lot more interesting. You play this for the gameplay. The only thing I will say about the story is that we get two very important inclusions into the Mega Man lore. That's both Proto Man or Break Man, Mega Man's brother, 
who you can play as in future games, and Rush, Mega Man's robotic dog, who is both important to the lore of Mega Man as well as important to the gameplay because he shows up in every other entry afterwards. Speaking of gameplay, let's just jump right into it. Mega Man 3 is one of the few times in the franchise where new things are actually added to the gameplay to make it a substantial upgrade from the previous title. In Mega Man 1 and 2, we get items 1, 2, and 3. These items are very essential to the gameplay. They help you create platforms, fly over big gaps, and climb walls. In Mega Man 3, we get Rush, who is this robotic dog who's in the form of Rush Jet, Rush Marine, and Rush Coil. It's basically the same mechanics as items 1, 2, and 3, except this time he's a dog. He has character, he has personality, and we love him. We love him. The only other big mechanic change in this game is the slide. It not only lets you go through levels faster, but you're actually required to use it in certain levels. Here is an issue that I have with Mega Man 3 though. We have the slide, we have Rush, but like, that's not much of a big change to the overall franchise. In reality, Rush isn't even much of a big change, he's just a stylized item that we had in the previous two games. While Mega Man 2 was a complete overhaul of the game, getting rid of poor level design choices, adding in new mechanics, and just overall feeling like a more polished Mega Man game, Mega Man 3 just kind of feels like a slightly more polished Mega Man 2, specifically as far as it looks visually, but the level design isn't much of a big change, we're just in new levels, and you can slide. So, uh, have fun sliding everybody, because that's really the big change we have here. Now, I'll give Mega Man 3 credit where it deserves. After you beat the 8 Robot Masters, instead of going straight to the Dr. Wily stages, we actually get more content this time. This time, it's all about the Breakman stages. The Breakman stages allow you to revisit four stages, they're just more difficult, we have more enemies, more level design choices here, you fight Proto Man a few times, and my favorite part about the stages is that you have to fight Doc Robot eight times. Now that sounds kind of stupid, and part of it is kind of stupid, I'm actually mixed on this, but I will say what's really cool about it is that Doc Robot is this new boss that takes the form of all of the Mega Man 2 bosses. So, not only are we fighting eight new Robot Masters in Mega Man 3, but we're fighting the old original Mega Man 2 bosses just with a new coat of paint. And it's, it's pretty cool. It's cool to see these bosses back for the second time in a game that just came out two years later. This is just something I found super dope the first time I realized exactly what I was going against. It's the perfect thing to kind of add more content to a third entry on a franchise without fully rehashing ideas. And this is what makes it even more interesting. And I'll say interesting because I'm still not 100% sure how I feel about it. Each of these bosses have the exact same boss fights as the Mega Man 2 fights, except they're a little bit faster and a little bit stronger. But what makes it more interesting is the fact that you don't have any of the Mega Man 2 boss weapons anymore. It all comes down to you fighting these eight robots with new abilities from Mega Man 3. Now this is cool because it's different and it's new and it's unique, but it's also kind of dumb because finding out what these weaknesses are is kind of difficult. I and mean, if you're not looking up a strategy guide, it's going to take you a long time to beat Mega Man 3. The worst thing is that these weaknesses aren't even that good at being weaknesses. Most of the time, you'll just barely do a little bit more damage than your Mega Buster would. And that's one of the faults that I have with these bosses. After you beat these guys though, it's on to the Wily stages. There are six of them this time, like the last time. The first stage is fine, you beat a boss, he's pretty chill. And then the second stage, guess who guys get to fight? The yellow f***ing devil. I'm tired of this guy, I don't ever want to see him again in my life. I beat him in Mega Man 1. I beat him in Mega Man 11, now we're in Mega Man 3. This time you can't use the glitch. Can't use the glitch, so it's just freaking painful, man. It's, it's painful, it's annoying. It's nothing special. This is rehashing ideas. And this makes me dislike Mega Man 3. Stage 3 has you fighting some Mega Man clones, which is similar to Mega Man 1. Again, nothing really special there. They're a little bit difficult though. And then you get to go to the boss gauntlet. Everybody's favorite thing in the franchise, right? Do, do we like do we like boss gauntlets? Do we do we enjoy these boss gauntlets in these games? Because I honestly don't know if I do. I don't think I like the boss gauntlets, but it's such a core part of the franchise that I can't just ignore them. 
I don't, I don't think I like him. But it's time for Wily Stage 5, where we get to fight. That's right, everybody's favorite, Dr. Wily. But wait, what is this? He was just a puppet from Five Nights at Freddy's? <gasps> because now it's time for Gamma. That's right, remember that robot from the beginning of the game that was like peaceful when he got stolen? Well, he's actually evil now, and he kind of sucks. He has this gigantic hand that just kind of comes in, and it one hit kills you. So be careful about that. Other than that, he's kind of hard. He's not, he's not particularly easy. It, especially considering the fact that you can only hit him from the top of the screen, which is really dumb. So you either need to have the right boss weapons to kill him and have those filled, or um, you're just gonna die. There's really not an, there's not another option here. But you beat Gamma, and then Wily escapes. Like I said, he, he looks like he's gonna die, but then you see that he doesn't actually die because that's how this franchise goes, and we're gonna see him again in the future. But I wanna backtrack to the Robot Master trophy because this is the real meat of the game. And I gotta say, after beating all of the obvious Robot Masters, like Air Man, Heat Man, and Ice Man, like we got Top Man, who's literally just a top, and his ability sucks gigantic donkey I don't know who came up with this, but it sucks. Or Shadow Man, you know, the edgiest boss in the game, whose ability is literally just like Metal Blades, except they suck, they're not as good. Oh, and not to mention, this is the hardest boss fight in the game. I was actually in my first playthrough of this game earlier last year. I decided, like I do with the other Mega Man games, I'm going to play through this entire game, only use the Mega Buster on the bosses. And then I got a Shadow Man, and I tried to fight him for like an hour and a half, and I couldn't do it, because he had like some bull attacks. So I gave up, and I just used the weapon on him, and that was the end of that run. But while Shadow Man is the hardest boss fight in the game, I need to talk about the actual hardest boss fight in the game. That's right, we're talking about Hard Man. Um, excuse me one second, I need to make a phone call right quick. Yes, uh, Capcom, hello? Why did you name a boss Hard Man? You didn't know there was a Hard Man in your game. Yeah, you have a literal sexual innuendo in your 28 year old game. How on earth did you let this get by you? You'll, you'll fire the guy immediately? Okay, great, thank you. At least somebody has some common sense. We've also got Magnet Man, Snake Man, Needle Man, Gemini Man, and Spark Man. While the previous two entries in the franchise were easy to figure out what the weaknesses were going to be against the Robot Masters, in Mega Man 3 it's literally impossible. Did you know that Gemini Man is weak against snakes? Yeah, me neither. That's why I looked up a walkthrough to figure this out. The thing that I found hating throughout this game, and hating is probably more of a strong word than I mean to use it, but I really did not like the level design much of this game. It is generally more or less on par with Mega Man 2, except it takes so many of the bullshit elements from Mega Man 1's level design while not really changing anything up or adding anything new to Mega Man 2's level design. Also, I've got to talk about the weapons right quick. They're not good. Like, none of them are good. They're better than Mega Man 1's weapons, which I talked about how much I disliked that game, but compared to 2's, I'm just not really much of a fan. Like I said earlier, Shadow Man's weapons are basically Metal Blades, except they're worse. Top Man's weapon is the literal worst weapon in any Mega Man game I've ever played. Snake Man's weapon is fine. Needle Man's weapon is pretty much useless because you might as well just use the Mega Buster. And Magnet Man's weapon is probably the best. It's not that bad. It's kind of like homing missiles, but sometimes they don't work. That's the best. That's the best weapon in the game. And that's why I just ended up using my Mega Buster throughout most of this game. But you know what? I know this seems like a pretty quick ending to this review, whatever you want to call it, but I really don't have anything more or less to say about Mega Man 3. It's an improvement on Mega Man 1, but not much of an improvement as Mega Man 2 was. And in fact, it doesn't really improve much on Mega Man 2, except by adding us a slide mechanic and giving us those Breakman stages. Those Breakman stages were just okay though, they're nothing really special. The Doc Robot bosses were cool, but finding out the weakness for those bosses is kind of difficult, so you might as well just use a walkthrough when you play it. The music, the music, everybody talks about how good the music is in this game, and it's good, but it's not as great as Mega Man 2's soundtrack in my opinion. And I know, part of this is probably nostalgia for me, because I've played Mega Man 2 like 5 times now over the last 10 years. But I've also played Mega Man 3 twice now once in a commentary sitting, and once in a relaxed, comfortable position. And I have to tell you that I still think Mega Man 2 is better than Mega Man 3. 
I had some fun with this game, but more or less I was just frustrated that I wasn't playing Mega Man 2. Now, this doesn't mean Mega Man 3 is bad by any means. In fact, I don't think it's bad. I think it's a good, comparable game. If you like the franchise, you're probably going to at least like Mega Man 3. You should play it if you like the franchise, but I still think you should skip number one, play Mega Man 2, and then play number three, knowing that it's not quite as good as Mega Man 2 is. Well, I guess I'm a sellout now. In today's world, everybody needs a website. If you're a content creator like myself, you need a website. If you own a business, you need a website. If your first name is Susan and you got 25 cats you want to share with the world, you need a website. But in order to have a professional sounding website, you gotta have it hosted. Here's where Bluehost comes in. Starting at just $3.99 a month, you get a free domain, you get free SSL included, one-click WordPress installs, and 24-7 support. As someone who worked in a web development company for two years, I can tell you that a lot of hosting sites make things way too complicated to put in your domain name. So having this one-click WordPress install is not only a great feature, but a huge time saver. Check out the link in the description box below to get your free domain name today and tell them Zach sent you. And that's all the time we have for today. If you like Mega Man, go ahead and hit that like button. If you don't like Mega Man, but was thinking, hmm, you know what? That was an all right video. Hit that like button too. I love you. Love you guys. Thank you. We're going to be back again tomorrow with the Friday episode and then hopefully have a Saturday episode on Sunday. We'll be back on track for Monday's episode. So you guys are getting, you're still getting every video I plan on putting out this week. But in the meantime, go ahead and hit that subscribe button for your everyday nerd. And I will see you tomorrow. Goodbye.